So we hear the ID Tech X show here with the Abba Lunix. And uh, so who are you? I'm Rune Wendelbo. I founded Abba Lunix uh, 14 years ago. And uh, with the idea to make tough coatings. And after uh, a few years we came across graphene oxide, which we could make in only a few grams uh, batches. Over the years, after some requests to, to, to deliver larger batches, we developed a safe process, safe and scalable process. So we now make one kilogram. One gram was enough to work for one year making thin films. So the challenge now is that there aren't many people who really need those quantities. So we have overcapacity, but we work closely with now a list of six professional customers, who um, industrial customers, who um, who uh, seem to be at um, either production or uh, pilot level. In so their this is a graphene. What is this? This is. Uh, this is actually freeze-dried graphene oxide, which is one of the derivative products we have. So this is just 0 0.5 grams, filling a container of 50 milliliter. You said 0 0.5 grams? Yeah, 500 milligrams. So that means this stuff is very, very, very light? It's the same quantity as in this one, which is a more dense powder. So how do you make it undense? How do you make it, what's it called, expand? Oh, well, it's just freeze-drying. So that's a very normal, like, freeze-dried coffee. And um, uh, so what do you say uh, from uh, graphite to battery? Yeah, so, uh, uh, Tessel? Yes. Please. Yeah, about Hi, the so graphene batteries. Uh, he already been through the graphene oxide, right, uh, RGO? Not yet, everything, but okay. I was just checking here, and uh, you say yeah. from graphite yeah. to battery. What are you talking yeah. about here? So, it's basically related to what uh, yeah. Rune has been doing in, in Abalonics. Basically, Rune gets uh, his raw material, the graphite, from Norwegian sources and converts into reduced graphene oxide, which we utilize in some battery applications, specific battery applications called lithium sulfur battery. People call it next generation uh, uh, the battery technology after lithium ion uh, batteries. And then we try to find the final, uh, final end users to you utilize call it these batteries. Liquid oxide? No, this is lithium sulfur lithium, battery. Lithium, lithium sulfur. sulfur. Battery. Yeah. Sulfur is going to be the big successor. Yeah, next generation, yeah, successor to uh, lithium ion batteries. There are two candidates, lithium, uh, lithium sulfur or lithium air batteries. Lithium air is considered like 20, 30, 40 years, maybe some, some, as some uh, claims. It will never uh, uh, become commercialized. So lithium sulfur is considered the next generation because of its high energy density, because of its abundance and environmentally uh, friendly uh, materials, using the environmentally friendly materials like sulfur, because it's abundant, it's cheap, it's everywhere, it's byproduct of petrochemical industry. And uh, the, the interesting thing here is that we combine these two companies. These are sister companies. Rune makes uh, reduced graphene oxide. We try to utilize it in our batteries, which uh, finds a specific application in lithium sulfur batteries. Unlike uh, using this material as the electrode active material, we are using it as a very small amount of additive in battery formulation, electrode formulation. So what does the uh, graphite do with the lithium sulfur? What is the connection? There is no graphite. There is reduce graphene oxide. So basically, in order to make reduced graphene oxide, you have to start with graphite. There is a okay. natural uh, source of graphite in Norway, a uh, graphite coal mine. And you basically get graphite through a uh, modified uh, Hummers method. Uh, you exfoliate graph graph graphene layers and oxidize it, and then reduce it to form reduced graphene oxide. So we are not directly using graphite in the battery, but we are using a converted uh, reduced product from graphene, graphene oxide. oxide. Yeah. And that part that is the it goes inside in the, the lithium sulfur. Lithium sulfur battery. But yeah. lithium sulfur doesn't mention anything about 
graphene. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, but if you go to the literature, you will see that people are uh, utilizing different uh, polar compounds to solve some uh, in, in, intrinsic problem of sulfur electron. And uh, reduced graphene oxide is one of them. Is I it mean, the best way to do it or what? It is, it is cheap. It is easy to tune graphene oxide. You know, when I say cheap, it might a little uh, be misleading because uh, we have full access to reduced graphene oxide from Abalonix, which is the sister company. Uh, however, um, it's very easy to tune the surface properties, uh, sur surface chemistry of uh, graphene oxide. So you can just tune it to specific uh, problem, to solve specific problems in the battery. Uh, what does it say here on, on this one? Oh, that is again a Bolonix. Yeah, yeah, that is again uh, a Bolonix. Very uh, scientific detail that I cannot. Ah, That's cannot another color. And how about this uh, right here? Um, uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can, can you explain uh, what's going on here? Yeah. So um, since there weren't uh, any real need for large quantities, what we did, we we took our graphene oxide and developed a range of uh, derivative products like uh, uh, deacidified GO. Graphene oxide is very, very acidic, so for many applications, you may need this um, acidity may be a problem. And we see customers uh, now buying different products and actually the, the, um, the uh, increase in sales over the last few years has not been in the basic graphene oxide, uh, but in all these de de derivatives products. Um, and uh, the first real industrial application we see is also in one of the derivatives. Which and, one? And that's uh, I, I I don't cannot say which ah, one because okay, it's, yeah, okay. but it's I can say who it is. Oh. It's a company in Sweden that uh, does. Um, Furniture, I, IKEA. No, I'm joking. No, no? I, actually they talk to IKEA and many other also oh, yeah? because it's for anti-corrosion and mm. replacing chromium and things. But nice. this one is on uh, the plate or make a anti-corrosion plate plating on uh, parts for Scania trucks. So the company mm. is called Provexa and is, is in Gothenburg. And they now do this from 1st of January. So you need to put it on all the train tracks? That's a lot of... That's a lot of... Uh, exactly. That's big. Yeah, so they dip in this suspension and they do some treatment and they add other components. So that's the one way you can use all your material, right? Yeah. Just they, put it on all the train tracks. On all of them will well, use them? A train tracks is not... Uh, it, it, could, it could be. And the heat exchangers, for example, is on the list they were, and, and bolts, because there's often a lot of corrosion on bolts. So corrosion is no good? Uh, corrosion uh, represents a loss of 2% of world economy per year. Oh. And if you can re reduce that to 1%, it's 1% yeah. of the total world economy, which is a lot of money. That's a good idea. That yeah. sounds like great. What are you showing here on, the, on this wall here? Well, can you explain this? Yeah, this is uh, actually a nitrogen doped geo, which uh, has uh, some advantages in the sulfur batteries we talked, uh, Tesla talked about before. Um, it holds sulfur in place more efficiently than pure graphene oxide. It holds the sulfur yeah, in place. It, so is it, it related to the batteries? It's related to the batteries. The, um, the problem with sulfur batteries is that sulfur migrates from um, migrates from the cathode to the anode, and the graphene oxide can be used to hold it in place in the cathode. And um, it says ultrasonication. Yeah, we we, we mean? it means we have to disperse it in water, so we have it in an ultrasonification bath for half an hour. This is very standard, it's not something we invented, it's very uh, pra uh, general practice. So, uh, you were mentioning uh, that there is a, a graphite mines in, uh, in Norway. In, in Northern Norway. Is it one yes. of the best mines or what? Yeah. Uh, the biggest source? Norway is a very expensive country. So, um, uh, this mine can operate because they have one of the highest grade graphites in the world. It's 70% pure graphite in what they dig out, whereas other mines, 
in Africa and other places, China, have as low as 1%. So is graphene, is, is it going to be huge in the future or is it already huge? Or I A think, lot of people are talking about graphene, right? Yeah. There, so what, how, a how big is it going to be? And there's a lot of fake news. So many people claim things that are not true or they wish would be true. Uh, I think this will go, ha there will be a development where we first see some uses in high-end products like sports equipment and sensors and things where the kilogram price could, a kilogram price of $1,000 or more is not a problem. And then we, once we scale up, we can lower the price. We have estimated that when we come to real industrial scale production, we can come down to $25 per kilo, kilo production cost. And uh, then that opens up a lot of new applications. Like what? Like In uh, smart clothes? Yeah. In, uh, and, and, everywhere? And for example, concrete. There's a lot about talking about concrete. I think much of it is fake news, but there could be also real advantages like uh, How does it improve the concrete? Yeah, the strength and uh, the corrosion, like stopping uh, micro cracks from forming so that salt comes into the concrete and corrodes it. So that means you're going to solve potholes? Uh, There's not going to be potholes anymore because the concrete's going to be stronger? Yeah, hopefully. Something I, like I, that? I, 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 I'm not doing that myself, but uh, there are many claims in the literature. So mm -hmm. once we come down to low prices, these applications can be mass, massive volumes. So here you're with the Scalan Graphite uh, uh, partner company, right? Yeah. And uh, do you have other uh, people around here at the booth doing different things or talking yeah. about different things? or? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, 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 um, the applications we now see is this corrosion protection and also some protection of um, PCBs. And uh, we have a customer who develops uh, membranes for uh, fuel cells, our, actually our biggest customer, in a, um, actually in a country in East Europe. And uh, we have people working with um, water treatment. The, the graphene oxide has some properties that are very different from other materials and very high surface area. So, and it's easy to work with compared to, to many other nanomaterials. So it definitely has advantages and that we think will materialize over years in real, real industrial applications, but it will take years. Are you the leader in Norway for this kind of stuff? Or? Yeah, I would say yeah? yes, yes. And uh, Norway is a leader for this kind of stuff in the world? No. Because of the graphite uh, mines? No, there but, are many uh, other... Is many, yeah, from there China are, or what? There are much, lots of graphite mines. So uh, we don't depend. We think we... Um, the Skaland Graphite now develops a new um, pure graphite powder, which we will uh, use in our production. Until now, they have just sold unrefined graphite to Germany, and that contains too much silicates for our application. So, uh, but we see it as a very high quality graphite. Um, so there is, there is room for improvement in all levels here. Is this R&D that needs to be invested in certain fields or, yeah, or is your partner doing everything or you have to and do it? Even if this anti-corrosion coating now is good, there's no chance it's the best we could achieve. So we will work with this customer to constantly improve and tune the properties of our graphene oxide and they will tune and improve the, the, um, all the other ingredients so to improve further. It will never stop.